Hey, welcome Lakeview Nation. Here we are, sculpture class, eighth hour. And today we are going to learn how to make an explosion of movement sculpture. We're gonna use 12 basic shapes and we are gonna create a whole series of like right there. This one is an example of what we're doing right here. 12 basic shapes. Um, we're gonna work on that and how we're gonna do that. So basically you're gonna need cardboard and I have cardboard here. And as always, I have a piece of cardboard underneath so that I do not cut it. Now, I can use a ruler and I could draw out. In this case, I am using squares. So I am gonna use squares and I'm gonna cut squares out. So um, I'm gonna start on a side that I already have some squares cut and I'm just gonna draw out some squares. And I wanna make sure that my squares are of the same height. So I'm gonna measure and make sure this one is gonna be four inches. So I'm gonna go four inches and I'm gonna make a number of marks here, four inches. Then I'm gonna draw my line that connects them at four inches. And then I'm gonna divide that in four inches. There's a four and there's a four. So now I just have to have 12 shapes that are similar. And those 12 shapes now my similar because I'm using a square is now uh, my similar shape. So all of my items have to be, notice when I put it in, I pull it away. Notice I'm standing. I don't um, pull it towards my hand. I poke the knife in and I draw it away and I get some nice squares. Now, I need to create notches. If I notch in the middle, I get less dynamic. I get more dynamic and more, uh, movement if I create my sculpture by having them in the corners. So I am going to cut that way and it didn't go through, but just so you can see. Now, I want to make sure that that's a tight fit, not as wide, not wider than the piece itself originally, because if you do that, you have a tendency to, um, they fall through. And I recommend at least an inch, if not further, in the cut. So some people make these little itty baby cuts and, and then try to attach them and then wonder why they don't stay up very well. So some of the things you might have to do is you might have to assemble these. See if I assemble these now and I put it together like that, this is an art process called interpenetration. So I've broken the plane, the flat plane of this by the vertical plane of this. So now I have thereby created movement. Now. When I try to stick this piece in, there's not much to hold it there. So I could go like this, and now that piece goes in there. And do I have movement with this? Not really, even though I do get a line that goes right here, that kind of makes a line of movement. I could make another one coming here, and another one coming here, and another one coming here. So I have to think about this and solve the problem. So I've already started to solve the problem and I've already got paint on this one. So this could be my base. It could sit like this, it could sit like this. I think it's gonna sit more like this. And my table's a little crooked right now. So mine rises up a little bit. So I'm gonna look at having this rise out of the surface of the other one. So I'm gonna make a series of cuts um, and I'm going to place this like this. And I had that one going right there. And I got to get that in there. There we go. Now I could take this piece and I could add this piece right there. Now the question is, does this have movement? So if we look at this, yes, I start to get movement that goes up this way. You know what might be even better is if I move this piece further over here. So let's just take a look at what happens. Sorry about that. My uh, Now take a look at what happens. See, I get more movement. The shape goes through like this. Okay. So that's what we're really looking for. Um, uh, we're trying to create movement that is a principle of design in, in um, art. Uh, it is a important uh, visual element in sculpture. 
it creates energy